Nino can still buy a ticket. Be there with you, Stuart. I'm quite capable of unveiling my new line without the assistance of a pants presser. But Nino's been in design school for six months. Have you checked the suicide rate among the instructors? You haven't even looked at my sketches. Just because Loverboy is talented between the sheets doesn't mean he can design for the house of Stuart. I wish you'd reconsider. I really do. Tend to the business end of this enterprise, Paula. Leave the artistic side to someone who knows the difference between a spaghetti strap and spaghetti bolognese. Thank you. Just remember, he brought this on himself. Air traffic controller Johnson. There's a bomb on flight 692 set to detonate below an altitude of 1,000 feet. If I remember my geography, Los Angeles is 286 feet. Happy landing. Ladies and gentlemen, due to unexpected turbulence over Los Angeles, we are being rerouted to Denver. We hope this doesn't cause any inconvenience. Denver? We certainly won't land in Denver. Sir, please. You don't understand. I'm taking Biodome. It's an experimental drug for my heart. Well, I'm sure that's fascinating, sir, but... It won't function at that altitude. I'll die if we land in Denver. How'd they take him? Great. Except for this one guy. Says he's taking some new heart medicine. Says the altitude in Denver will kill him. There's always one troublemaker. If there really is a bomb set to go off below a thousand feet, Denver's our only shot. It's 5,000 plus. You've got 278 other passengers to think of. Not to mention your crew. It's your call, Captain. Go back. Give him a complimentary drink. Sucks. After last night, I could think of a thousand ways to open this conversation. Now I have a thousand and one. I didn't mean that. Last night was wonderful. Beautiful. Almost beyond human experience. Only while we were sleeping, somebody broke in and hid my things. Actually, somebody got up early this morning and tried to make order out of chaos. Thank you. 
Well, maybe it didn't look like it, but I knew exactly where everything was. Ah! Yeah, on the floor. Hello? Arnold Epstein? My lawyer. Since when do you have a lawyer? He's gonna get me visitation rights to my daughter. Hey, Arnold, how's it going? How soon do I get to see my kid? Bounced. My check bounced. I, I understand a retainer is a sacred bond between attorney and client, but I... What, can't you at least file a motion or something till I make it good? No, Arnold, I don't want you to get in touch with your partners. Faith may move mountains, but it'll take a certified check to budge Arnold Epstein. How much do you need? Don't worry, I'll straighten this out. As soon as I find socks that match! <laughs> This is how you repay me. Stab me in the back, shoot me in the foot. What are you talking about? You stopped payment on my expense check. I'm laying rubber all over town, and my lawyer won't handle my case. Case? You haven't been arrested for drunk driving again. Wes. Oh, I know. You haven't touched a bottle for eight months or, or been behind a steering wheel, but what's with the lawyer? Wes, why'd you do it? You want to see me beg? All right. I'm begging. And if the office were any bigger, I'd be crawling. If you'd bother to come in once in a while, you'd know that, that we've got a new vice president. Been here three weeks clearing out the dead wood. Don't these empty desks say something to you? But you're lucky. You're lucky. If I hadn't done a lot of fast talking and a lot of lying, you'd be out on your ear. We'll see about that. You need an appointment to go in there. What do you got open? Tomorrow. At, uh, four? I'll take it. Oh, where are you going? Now I have an appointment. Say, fella, I got a bone to pick with you. Really? You the plan lady? I've been known to snip a few limp vines. Tatlinger? H. Tatlinger? Please don't tell me you work here. Of course I worked here. I've worked here for three years. Dedalus Patrick Murphy. The drunk. Alcoholic. What's the difference? Drunks don't have to go to all those meetings. Now listen, Ms. Taplinger. You stopped payment on my expense check, and I have to tell you, it came at a very inconvenient time. Good. I was hoping to get your attention, perhaps persuade you to drop by the office. Well, now that I'm here, I'd like you to unstop it. Mr. Murphy. These are your expense reports for the last three months, and this is your caseload. Pay the two dollars, signed D.P. Murphy. I like to keep things concise. You treat this office like a bus station restroom. The only time you use it is when you need relief. In your case, monetary relief. That's not true. I'm a good investigator, a damn good investigator, and over the years I've saved First Fidelity a pile of dough. Well, if you wish to continue here, you will act like every other employee, which means you will occupy a desk 
Well, what do I need a desk for? I'm in the field all the time. The better to see you, Mr. Murphy. To know you are putting in a solid eight hours. To watch you work on more than one case at a time. And to have you file reports on the proper forms. In short, to keep you off the unemployment line. I accept the offer. Now, when do I get my money? When this stack equals this stack. Well, now, I, I better get cracking. Oh, one more thing, Mr. Murphy. Since you represent First Fidelity wherever you go, I suggest you invest in a new wardrobe. One that reflects our dignified, substantial, successful image. That's not beyond you, is it, Mr. Murphy? You weren't successful. Stay tuned. Give me some cases. What? Cases. I want cases, as many as you have. This isn't a Burger King. You don't just order one arson and two robberies and one stolen car to go. Wes, that broad's got a pair of clippers aimed at the most vulnerable part of my anatomy, my wallet. Now be a pal and help me out. Only start me off easy. Uh, something open and shut. I got a lot on my mind. Open and shut? Mm -hmm. I'll be back for more. First Fidelity Insurance. Oh, Mr. Murphy, come in. Uh, I'm here about the partnership policy on Stuart Graff. Pretty open and shut. Poor guy's heart medicine conks out on him because he can't take the altitude. He tried to warn them, but they wouldn't listen. I'm contemplating a lawsuit against the airline, especially since there wasn't even a bomb on that plane. Uh, did he have a wife, kids? Stuart was gay. Gay as in cheerful or... or Oh. Hey, if you just put your John Hancock right there, you should have the check in no time. Hey, Paula, come take a peek. Nina Zaketi, Mr. Murphy from the insurance company. Oh, yes, the Murphy. Terrible tragedy. Nina was Stuart's protege. They had some wonderful plans together. Now we'll have to carry on alone. But we'll always have Stuart to thank. Yes. Stuart's given us so much. Well, I'll see you with the check. Any problems? Smooth as silk. <laughs> 